to the channel, folks. I'm your host, Fawn. Thank you for joining another episode here on Battle Gamers. And today we've got the new Legends Pinball Rachel board. This just showed up. It's the video input for the back glass so that we can run a separate PC and have the pinball machine uh, back glass tables from that show up on there and be able to hit a button and then be able to play the normal tables that are on the Legends Ultimate Pinball. So this just came out. This was $49 plus $20 shipped. It showed up, I think, from the day it shipped to here in like three days from China, Shenzhen, China. So in the box, gives you a little guide. Now they don't really tell you much. They just kind of tell you like, hey, here's the board and you're on your own at that point in terms of getting it working and all that stuff. So it does come with a plunger, or not a plunger, a, um, a button, arcade button, whatever you want to call it, for the machine to be able to flip back and forth, a cable long enough to run that button from the front to the back glass where the board's gonna sit, and then you get the actual cable to do the swap to the actual board that's in there. And then you also get the Rachel board or the Beavis board or Beavis board, whatever they want to call it. That's it right there. And that will go and replace the board that came with it for the back glass. So you'll just swap this out. And that's about it. Those are the, those are the components, but we're gonna do a little bit more here because I'm gonna have the machine somewhat tore open. Um, not completely, but it will be tore open. I'm gonna tear everything off and instead of having, you can't really see them down there, a bunch of cables and like another PC and everything sitting on the side, we're gonna fit it into the machine. Now this is a PC that I've used before in small spaces. It, it's extremely efficient in terms of heat, getting rid of heat. And it's an Alienware Alpha R2. Now this is an i7 with a, it's already got a nine, 60 mobile, I think they call it mobile, uh, card in here. It's it's super efficient, really nice. It's a it's a beefy i7. It's like a it's like a what a 6000 series i7. So it'll run for quite some time. It does have an out there that that out that I guess controller board or SCART, it looks like a SCART cable, but it, I don't even know if it says what it is. It's an Alienware. Um, or a Dell proprietary cable that then will run into a graphics amplifier. And this has multiple USB outs because that only has one USB out. This has multiples. So this has a 1080 Ti in it, I believe. And that is going to fit inside as well as this will leave the back door off so to let heat come out because I'm not 100% sure without any holes in it or without any additional holes for airflow how efficient it'll be of getting rid of it. This thing sat in another arcade cabinet that I had um, enclosed, never had a problem. The graphics amplifier was in there as well on a different level and it was somewhat enclosed. Again, there was some ventilation, some, some holes for, for ventilation to come through. So we'll see how good it works with it in there. We're not gonna be running anything too heavy off of it yet, but ultimately the pinball machine will sit over this corner. I have a Legends Ultimate Arcade here. I'm actually going to run a uh, long enough OTG, USB cable and HDMI to go from this to there so I can have dual use out of it, but everything hidden in the Legends Ultimate pinball machine. So we'll, we'll see how it all works out. We're gonna have to tear some stuff down. I will somewhat go through it. I don't wanna make this a full tear down because I'm going to be playing around with it. I've never opened it up. I have an idea of what this will do, how it'll fit, everywhere I wanna place everything. We'll go through the main components and then we'll see how it all ends up, if it, if it actually will work. I think it'll all work just fine. 
Um, the only thing I'm worried about is a little bit of the heat that these two units could build up inside there until we get like airflow. So we might have to put some fans in, drill some holes in the underside and then that back door to be able to flow air through it efficiently and make sure nothing bad goes on. But I don't think we're gonna have too much of an issue. This thing produces probably very little heat. Uh, like I said, the Alienware also produces very little heat. And we'll see how that graphics card runs. Again, it's never really running too hot. And if we have to, there is a way that we can uh, run a USB out from this to be able to control the back screen. It would work enough. Um, it's not my preferred method. I'd rather use that and be able to power all the machines. Ultimately, what we can do is even have this externally mounted so we don't have to worry about it. We'll see. The other thing that this does have um, outside of two USB ports, which all the USB ports will be taken up by the two OTG cables for the control deck to be able to work in each machine. Then it's got two more USB on the back and one will be used for a wireless Razer turret keyboard that I have, turret and mouse and keyboard. And the other one I believe will be there's one additional USB item that I've got to plug in that I can't think off the top of my Oh, a camera. Because I'm going to build this so it can stream and capture video from both the back glass, because we're going to put a uh, unit in there that will be for, it's an AverMedia video capture device that will sit behind here. So it'll capture this directly. The PC will then capture this screen and we should be able to kind of merge it into like XSplit along with a camera to be able to do like live streams or at least capture the video when I'm recording. I can't really live stream here, but that's another intended purpose. And then finally, there's one little USB port underneath of this and there's a USB Xbox 360 or Xbox One adapter for controllers to connect. So you can connect up to, I believe it's four controllers Xbox One controllers to that. So we'll have that in there as well. So it ultimately should be a self-sufficient setup, like to stream, to capture video, everything like that. It was an extra one, like I said, I had from a cabinet. I had to, the hard drive went bad. I redid all that. So uh, we're gonna give it a chance and see what it does. So stay tuned. We'll check out the install, take some footage, and then I'll catch back up once we've got it up and running and then we can talk about everything that went into it and, and how it looked. Okay, see you in a minute. So we've got everything now in the actual Legends Ultimate Pinball Machine. So we've got the Vivas board, BBIS board, we've got the uh, Alienware Alpha R2 as well as the graphics accelerator with that 1080 in it. We've got all, everything's wired up, everything's hooked up. We've got the camera and all of that hooked up. So we should be good to go. Back glass, everything is still functioning. Everything's plugged in. You know, this is the only part that I didn't go through and do anything with. I've seen, I believe Cool Toys did it with his Simpsons arcade, or Simpsons pinball, where he actually took some ribbon cable, HDMI and USB. I've seen them on Amazon. They run about $15, $20 somewhere a piece. And then you can fish it through there and down into the, uh, you know, down into the cabinet itself and be able to plug it in. I didn't go that far yet, but that's something that, you know, would consider definitely doing. It's, you know, throwing $30 on it's not a real big deal, but 
in general, uh, right now, just wanted to have something functioning and be able to see if it was going to overheat, which again, it's been running for roughly a day now. I had to wait for a part to come in, a little uh, display port to HDMI piece, um, because I used up the other HDMI, the only port on the 1080 that I have that had a HDMI. The rest, the other three were display port. So used that up, needed a display port adapter, and now we're good for, for the back glass. So everything's running. The button I've mounted under here, as you saw, so you can just flip this. And now it puts it into, uh, I guess what you'd call it is OTG mode. And you can see the PC is running on the back class there. And then you just touch it again. And then it flips back to the, you know, the basically the, the functioning, the original functioning cabinet mode of this. And playing a game. Also have some nice tables on here. This is actually the, uh, I had the 108, I believe it is, 104 or 108 tables that you could purchase from uh, Zakaria and then picked up the deluxe pack, which was 10 more tables, but they're a little bit fancier. They're very similar to the way that, you know, the Zen tables are, I guess, the more modern tables, I guess I would put it that way. So let's throw one, oh, there it was. Combat Deluxe is one of them. Ah, I keep hitting that. Something weird about this, <laughs> I don't know how they decided to, to, to kind of tell everybody to handle the back and the select scenario, but for the original 30 tables that came on the device, or however many, 22, 22, Gottlieb tables, the start button is here, the back button is here, and that takes you, the start goes in, play or play button or whatever they call it, start, goes in, and then to back out, you're hitting the back button the whole way through. So it's kind of weird. Then the Zakaria tables, sorry, Yoda's over here pressing buttons. Uh, the first round, they kind of followed that. The, un, the deluxe tables do not follow the same user interface. It is completely strange. To get into them, it does. It's it, the only thing that's strange about it is why they, why they didn't force. I guess force would be the word, or require like a certain path to go in and then go back out of games and keep that unified on every table that was uh, available from you know at games directly. So this is the combat table. Looks really good. I know Yoda's always in the middle here. I'm going to scoot him up to the back. You sit up there. So everything functions on that. I mean, these are just the tables you pay for, $50 for 10 of them. They look really good, play really good. We'll do a separate video on them. But backing out, just to show that, if I hit the back button, which you would imagine it's the rewind button, I guess, all the other tables do that, this one just resumes. To get out, you have to hit menu, and then you hit start, which is opposite of every other table on there. It's really strange. So let's get out of that. We're gonna flip over uh, to the PC now, and I'm gonna try to do the recording from the PC itself as well. So hopefully the way it should work is the PC records everything here directly, you know, direct footage, and then we'll have like the camera over here and then we'll splice everything together and it should be a uh, good example. So we'll be right back, give me a sec. Okay, so now we've got the actual machine up and running with the back glass and the play field all set to OTG. We've got the USB cable plugged in to the Alpha R2 that's underneath and everything should be good at this point forward. The control deck panels now work as they did before, you know, when we were playing with just the, the play field before we got the, the new board and everything did the swap. But at this point, we can move in. You can see the back glass is showing a pinball FX3 image. All that is is essentially a JPEG. That's what we're dealing with when we're talking about back glass, at least in this scenario that I put together. Uh, you can go in and find really quality images if you check around on the Zen Studio uh, forums. 
uh, go to Reddit, find some forums there. There's people that have already done all the work. All you need is a 1920 by 1080 JPEG or PNG that has whatever you want in the back glass and you name them accordingly to each game file. There's instructions on the web. I'll, I'll drop a link below to talk about how to do this and where to put them into the actual uh, Steam folder for Pinball FX3. So everything's loaded in and like I said, if you find somebody that's already done this, they will go ahead and rename, they've already renamed everything. You just grab those images and drop them all in that folder and you're ready to go. And at that point, whatever game is playing is gonna pull that image and put it up in the back class. That's how it works. The second part of this is you need to contact Pin, uh, Zen Studios. Zen will then get you a cabinet code, which you put in and it gives you access to a new menu called cabinet code at the top. And that allows you to reposition that back glass and the DMD. Essentially, those are sitting somewhere right behind, underneath of this right now. That's how it's set up. Talking about how the setup is done on my machine really fast. This is display one. That is display two in Windows. Display two is set as the secondary monitor and it's in horizontal position. Display one is set as primary monitor and it's in portrait position. So instead of being 1920 wide by 1080 high, it's actually 1080 high by 19, or 1920 high by 1080 wide. So it's in portrait mode and that's exactly how this setup is running. If we go in and look at the options, under video, we can see the screen resolution in Pinball FX3 is set to 1080 wide by 1920 high. So portrait mode and it's in full screen. And then of course I have that 1080 in there so I can run everything at full, full blast. So gamma or sorry, uh, V-Sync on and um, anti-aliasing -alias and all that stuff is, is completely turned on. So we're good to go there. So we'll back out. Then we need to go up to cabinet mode, which again, that code that you get from them enables. And under cabinet mode, it talks about the settings for the back glass display and the DMD. Orientation is set to zero since we're already in portrait mode. We don't need to shift anything around. There is a case where you don't make your play field the primary display. You actually make the back glass the primary display and then you've got to window the play field and drag it down. I couldn't get that to work. I always had the uh, windows uh, bar at the top where it's like minimize and, and enlarge or maximize. Could not get rid of that. I flipped it around and said make this the primary display for the play field and that the secondary. So essentially in my setup, I have to move the back glass image up and the DMD up in the settings. So how I did that, you go and you turn on dot matrix repositioning on, you have to figure out the numbers toying around with it. I just started typing some things in, seeing where it would appear, ended up on this machine with my setup that dot matrix horizontal position. So essentially where the DMD is gonna be left, right, or center. I put that at 175, that kind of gets it right into the center. The vertical position, sometimes you have to use negative numbers depending upon raising or lifting it above a certain point. So negative 300 brought it up to kind of the, you know, three, four, or a, a quarter of the bottom of the display so it's lower, it's not centered, it's lower in there. And then the size to fit into uh, the area where it designates kind of the DMD, 800 wide by 200 high. So 800 dot matrix horizontal size and 200 dot matrix vertical size. So all of this you'll be seeing in the, the video itself. You can copy it kind of try it out in your setup if you've got one of these and then toy around with it from that point. Then you also have to do back glass position on, again, raising that image up of the back glass. 
The best one that I came up with was negative 640 for back glass horizontal position, so kind of where it centers, and negative 1080 vertical position to get it up here. And then for the size, because in the images I were using, I was using, or I'm using, there's overscan. So you can you can kind of enlarge the image bigger than what it should be. There are 1920 by 1080 images, but with that overscan, I took it to a back glass horizontal size of 2400. And that made it fit in that window. Kind of bleeds over on some images. I could probably do a better job of getting images, things like that for it. And then back glass vertical size 1080. And that gets it up there. And at that point, we're good to go. So I'm going to back out of here. We'll fire up my favorite game, Theater of Magic, and take a look at it. So it's already showing the back glass for that. And you can see the black bars where the DMD is going to sit in there. So when we fire the game up, we should see the DMD show up. The back glass doesn't do anything else, the image rather. Now, I'm sure that there could be like a, a live kind of image or a... Um, you know, maybe an MPEG or something like that, that you could do. Um, I don't have any of those. I didn't go that far with it. So we'll see, maybe we'll find one, but now it is complete. So outside of the, ex uh, the exciters, the, um, the little vibrating pieces that sit under here, outside of those working with it, everything else pretty much works with it. And it's basically stock in that sense, except for the guts of a whole nother PC in there. Now, switching back and forth is great. I think after playing some of the, the deluxe tables, some of those play really good comparable to the Pinball FX3 stuff. There was an issue where they were trying to get rid of some uh, frame skipping. They did, but they changed the actual flipper uh, I guess it's timing. I don't know, re refresh rate. And they were really slow. And then they put another update out. I think it was uh, this past weekend. So it would have been around the 23rd or something like that, 20, 22nd. And that actually fixed the flippers and put them back to normal. So everything is running great. The plunger works on the game. So now you can see it playing. Flippers feel good. You have your back glass with the DMD. So you should be seeing this all direct feed now. And to do that, I'm going to play a little bit of a couple tables. I'm going to shut these lights off and we're going to play just with that camera recording it. So kind of the all encompassing like streaming slash uh, pinball recording setup that I've made. So let's check that out and uh, see how it all works. Okay, now you got a bright light on my big mug. So you should be seeing it both. So the camera up here, the little uh, Razer camera, audio is still coming from my lapel mic. And then here you can see me kind of just in a, a different view from it. I don't know if we're really gonna use both, but we'll see. But you should be seeing the actual capture of the play field and the backlist together on Theater of Magic, which Again, we'll make it a very quality recording, I think. And moving forward, when I'm playing different things on the table, when we get to the shooters, after we get that um, that arcade, I don't know what they're calling it, the arcade deck for the pinball machine, where you have the joystick and you have the six buttons and the, the uh, rollerball um, accessory. The, that will allow us to play, you know, kind of the shooters and make it better. I really like shooters on this thing. I was really blown away by that. Like Ikaruga looked fantastic on here. And I can't wait to play it with a controller built into it because it, it's going to be a really good experience. I'm playing like crap right now because I'm talking, but let's get in here. And we'll, t you know, we're just going to play a minute on this table. We'll jump to another table just so you can get an idea of what some of the back classes I grabbed look like again you can grab any image and put it in there and you would have the ability to rename it to what you need to to have it show up on here oh, I got one more also having the plunger work on this is really phenomenal could still can't get it to work off of the legends link app so I don't think it's possible um, but on here with the OTG 
works like a dream. It does have those dead zones like we were talking about. It's, it's not perfect. Uh, I still have not figured out a way to fix that, but it is really, <laughs> it's really solid having that there. I can get around the dead zone. It's fine with me. It's, it's not, it's not annoying at all. But the flipper lag or whatever that was, that was horrible. I don't know what they were thinking with that. Um, obviously it was maybe a mistake because they did it in a firmware update. So however it worked out, it was just bad. Let's see here. So let's check. Now, you know, putting it back, you can just hit the button under here to flip the back glass and then hit the button up here to flip back to the table and you're back in business on the on the built-in games. You can just go right back in and fire that up and start playing any of the hundred plus games that you got on here, which is great. Okay, folks, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the look at the actual install, kind of the settings and just the overview of, of what the DMD looks like from an OTG PC. I'm pretty happy with the whole thing. I think that Ad Games did a good service in being able to put this out there. $50 you know, whatever, it was after the fact. $50 is fine with me, $20 to ship, it worked out. Otherwise, we'll end this video. I appreciate everybody watching it. Hope you enjoyed it, hope it was entertaining at least, and some maybe some uh, information you might have found here that would help you. If you do like this video, give it a like, leave a comment, let us know what you thought. Let us know if you're doing one of these, if you've got one. I know that we've had some folks come in and ask questions, went back through, did some testing, you know, gave what information I could find. So I'm always happy to do that. And then if you'd like and give us the, the subscribe, that would be great. I'd love to see you guys come back here, check out more content on the channel. That's how we get people to come in. That's how we grow it. And that's how we get to talk to more folks about kind of stuff that we like. You know, there's a bunch of us on here that do this channel and we're always happy to add more things in if we can to, uh, to talk about cool stuff. So appreciate it folks. Thank you again for watching. Hope you have a great day. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.